Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Um, we're really delighted to have this opportunity to get to know some of you a little bit, to see some faces we know and some faces we don't know. Um, so my name is Mary Ann Bressler, and I'm the Parish and Community Engagement Coordinator at Catholic Charities Southwestern Ohio. And we are under the Department of Life, Human Dignity, and Charity. And so my colleagues and I are very happy to be working with your families as you move along the love and action pathway. And we really do hope that you will see us both as a resource and a partner in this process moving forward. And um, we'll get started and introduce everybody and give you an opportunity to introduce yourselves to the rest of the group. But first, let's just place ourselves in God's presence and start with a prayer. God of all creation, we praise and thank you for your divine love from which we were created and which sustains us throughout our days. May Jesus' example of unconditional love and mercy guide us through this time of change. In the midst of reorganization, may we always prioritize the needs of the most vulnerable among us remembering the great commandment to love you, our God, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. May the Holy Spirit guide our conversations and inspire our actions so that together we may be your love in action. This we pray in the name of Jesus, our teacher and savior. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So before we get started with our presentation, I wanted to just um, have us go around and just introduce ourselves. So if you could just, um, and I'll, I'll kind of call you out through the list, but if you could just say your name, what parish and family you're from, and what your role is relative to love in action. So um, Andrew, I'll start with you. Hi, I'm Andrew Musgrave. I'm the director of the Catholic Social Action Office for the Archdiocese, and uh, I serve as part of the core team for the Love and Action Principle. Thank you, Bob. My name is Bob Wurzelbacher. I'm the director for the Respect Life Office and the Office for Persons with Disabilities, and also on this uh, core team. And Tony? Good morning. I'm Tony Steritz. I'm the CEO at Catholic Charity Southwestern Ohio and director of the Archdiocese Department of Life, Human Dignity, and Charity. Thanks. Sue? I'm Sue Keefe. I'm from McElhard Mary, and we're part of St. Gregory the Great. Excellent. And Sister Christine? I'm Sister Christine Pratt. I'm a staff member with uh, Andrew at the Catholic Social Action Office, coordinating the Southeast Rural Region of our Archdiocese. Thank you. And Diane? Hi, I'm Diane Mangus. I am part of the Miami County uh, grouping. It's called Our Lady of Fatima, and that's um, Troy, Piqua, West Milton, Covington, those areas. And Matt? I'm Matt Ruddle. I'm um, one of the Love and Action Coordinator, Pastoral Associate here at St. Rita's in Dayton, North Dayton, part of the St. Gasper family of parishes. We're served by the missionaries of precious blood. Very good. Thank you. And Father Cordier? Yes. Um, Father Cordier from uh, St. Simon the Apostle, uh, Mary Queen of All Saints here in Southwest Ohio, uh, the, the uh, Delhi area. Great. Kathleen? Hi, I'm Kathleen Lynn from Guardian Angels, also part of St. Gregory the Great. Um, I'm head of ministry over there. And Maggie. Hi, I'm Maggie Leon Guerrero, uh, and I'm with St. Gregory the Great as well. I work um, in the parish office in communications. Great. And Michelle. Hi, I'm Michelle Salyer. I'm the coordinator for uh, the Highland County, Adams County Catholic Churches. We're called Our Lady of the Hills. Excellent. Thank you. It's always so nice. Every one of these that we've done, we've had really nice representation from kind of various different parts of the archdiocese and people we often don't get to see in person. So this is really lovely. 
And so for those of you who are maybe a little bit less familiar with the love and action pathway, which might not be any of you at this point, but um, the pathway is basically being built by the Department of Life, Human Dignity and Charity, which includes Catholic Charity Southwestern Ohio, the Social Action Office and the Respect Life Office. So that's why the four of us are here representing today. And really our hope for Beacons as is that it will provide an opportunity for parishes to really mindfully create collaboration among the various ministries that fall under the Love in Action umbrella, which is a, it's a big umbrella, and really to just invigorate the people in our parishes in this work. And so I'm gonna turn it over to Tony and he's gonna give you an overview of the principle and a little kind of very encapsulated summary of what the first 16 months have been like. Great. Thanks, Marianne. And thanks again, everybody, for being here. It's great to see all of you. Uh, so just to kind of recap a little bit and make sure we're all on the same page about where we've been and where we're headed together. Um, love in Action, as you know, is one of the six uh, fundamental principles related to the Beacons of Light pastoral pathway. Uh, and uh, I often kind of refer to it as what we're talking about in essence here is old wine, but in new wine skins. So what love and action as a principle uh, is about is not trying to reinvent the wheel of social ministry um, or uh, charitable ministries, social justice ministries, respect life ministries, uh, to not recreate any of those things individually or what a parish would ultimately decide it feels called by the Holy Spirit to work on in its communities and um, uh, in solidarity with the world. But uh, what that does look like in the new families of parishes paradigm. So what is uh, incredible about this opportunity um, that we have before us is in the, in the midst of all the the, the challenges that we all face in our families related to Beacons of Light, we have this unique opportunity to really elevate love and action, I think, into a, an, a, to a key and prominent place with all the other ministries um, that a parish is known for. And this reflects, of course, everything um, that, that we understand about what it means to be church together. Um, I very often go to uh, uh, Pope Benedict XVI's Deus Caritas Est uh, encyclical, which defines that the church's responsibilities are to administer the sacraments, to proclaim the word, and to exercise the ministries of charity and justice. So um, in the very same way, by elevating love and action as a principle into the very life and definition of our new families of parishes uh, is a new opportunity. And it's, I think, unique in the history of this archdiocese, you know, that we are trying to be intentional across all of our families and parishes about saying this is who we are as church together. And it means all of these things uh, together to name that uh, and to articulate it specifically that way. So that's why um, we think it's important um, to to provide you resources, uh, to to name this, to identify who the leadership teams, uh, and to make sure this moves forward throughout the Beacons of Light phases um, that we're in the midst of. So, um, what uh, what we've provided so far uh, as a love and action team to try to support you is some guidance in what this can look like uh, as the families come together. And we understand too that you know, in some way, in some ways, there's kind of a Maslow's hierarchy of needs happening here, right? Yeah. Like pair, families are first defining mass times and um, staffing, and just all those daily routines that we've really got to get a handle on before we can think of some of these bigger picture questions, uh, like uh, how should we uh, ultimately organize our love and action ministries across the new family? So. I think we we are moving at the right pace, I think, in, in many of this. So we're we're in a space now of having about more than half of our parishes have identified love and action coordinators. 
Um, so we're still encouraging that to take place, but I think that's a good uh, step forward. And many of those coordinators are surrounded by love and action teams. So one thing that we're strongly encouraging parishes to do is after naming your coordinator, um, to make sure you have a team that is representative of the member parishes of that, of the new family. And not just those individual parishes, but also some kind of general representation of the types of ministries happening across the family within love and action. So to make sure we're, we are including respect life, that we are including some um, so, uh, social justice advocacy component, if that exists within the family, that we're including a St. Vincent de Paul or a Catholic Charities connection, that all of that is in, in, in a way kind of represented across the family on the, on the team as you kind of discern how you move forward organizationally together. And to help facilitate that process, we've designed a couple of tools. One is an is a, uh, initial inventory. Uh, so it's ba a basic document that any family can utilize that just provides an opportunity for all the representatives from uh, family member parishes to kind of inventory what ministries we all do together across the families to name them. And we've also designed a retreat process that we've done now about six times uh, for families of parishes across the archdiocese that provides an opportunity to go through the inventory, to name these ministries, and really to celebrate, to just celebrate the how the Holy Spirit has call, called all of these parishes together um, to promote the gospel of life and justice in the world. Um, so we continue to offer those retreat and encourage uh, families to, to consider using those. We've also designed uh, sample job descriptions. So ideally, in families that are naming coordinators, is families reassess their staffing structures. If the resources are there to make the decision that, you know, maybe we don't need three DREs or we don't need this many um, uh, uh uh, uh, liturgical leaders in, in, uh, on the staff, that it would make sense to invest one of those positions to be a love and action coordinator on staff or a love and action director. I mean, that is really going to propel a parish forward in these ministries on a sustainable basis, we feel. And so we've provided some draft job descriptions that are available to you to see what that can look like. Um, lastly, we've... Um, uh, about once a month have been sending out a love and action newsletter and hopefully all of you are getting it if not we want to make sure you're on that list to receive that and it's not a newsletter that's going to name all the amazing love and action related ministries to be a part of the catholic social action office has its newsletter the respect life office has its newsletter office of persons with disabilities has its newsletter Charities has a newsletter. We don't want to repeat all of those. The point of the Love and Action newsletter is to talk really strategically about how Love and Action overall can be moving forward in a family of parishes for all these ministries. But we refer you to all those individual newsletters as resources and examples of how your family can engage um, on specific ministries. So we encourage you to, to be a part of that and follow along with that. So where are we headed now? Um, we're currently in the phase two of Beacons of Life uh, within the whole uh, Beacons of Life process. Um, and what that means is vision. So what we want to offer uh, families is a three-part series on helping to form leaders in the love and action ministry to provide resources and to introduce all of you to kind of organizationally what this can look like in parishes. The, the format of it and everything that we're sharing are um, recommendations that really have existed for a long time from the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops and, of course, is represented to the, of the Magisterium of the Church and Catholic Social Doctrine. Uh, but we're packaging it in a way that we really hope it can be a resource as you form your love and action teams in your parish. So to explain more of how we're approaching this, I want to hand it over to Bob. Thanks, Tony. 
and Bob Wurzbacher, Office of Respect Life and Persons with Disabilities. So playing what Tony has said, he's going through some of the some of those nuts and bolts. I think it's uh, important to give for to get people together, the people on your staff together and really take a look at this vision, hear from the people who are doing these things uh, and really talk about how to start moving forward uh, at your parish. So we're going to help you educate your team uh, on why the vision is important, how the role has developed even in the history of the church. What are some of those organizations that your parish can work with, large as well as more local ones, geographically uh, centered, close to your parish, and how you can start with what you already have going on, of course, in your parish, and maybe build from there to a family of parishes that's working together and sharing resources, you know, of time, talent, uh, and treasure, create an ever-growing vision, right, of love and action in your parish family. So, in order to really make this uh, useful, we think, and helpful for everyone, we're going to offer these thing, trainings geographically, right, by deanery. So we're looking for you to invite in the range of five to seven people from your family of parishes. Group discussions are going to be involved here. So it's important to have a group of people from the same parish family together at these uh, at these trainings. Um, if you have a team formed already, of course, invite the team. Now, if you don't have a team formed, maybe you hopefully you at least have a love and action coordinator, hopefully. Um, but anyway, bring, of course, that coordinator and then just gather interested individuals from various groups and disciplines, you know, somebody from social action, somebody from a justice group, somebody maybe from St. Vincent de Paul, somebody from Respect Life, um, disabilities advocates for perhaps, you know, people who have various interests in these various areas that we call, that we put under this umbrella, we call love and action. And then also, especially ensure you have at least one person from each parish. You don't want any parish in your family to feel, you know, left out. So gather your team of five to seven people. <clears throat> sorry, to uh, to come to these sessions, and then we hope you can then move forward from these sessions, ready to get moving with your team, uh, or at least be better equipped to continue finding and more permanently recruiting and forming your team if that's not done yet. So we're going to launch this first series that we already have scheduled in February at uh, the St. Gregory the Great family. There were several uh, here this morning from St. Gregory the Great family. It'll be at Immaculate Heart of Mary Parish in February of 24. And not everybody knows all the parishes in their deanery, etc. So I'll just mention them quick to make sure if you're from that parish, you know that this is your deanery uh, that's happening first in February. So we're talking about the Cathedral B Deanery, and uh, that includes S1, the Tri-County Catholic Family, St. Gabriel, St. John Evangelist, Westchester, and St. Michael in Sharonville. That includes S2, which is Good Shepherd. Uh, it includes S3, which we just talked about, the St. Gregory the Great Family, Guardian Angels, uh, Immaculate Heart of Mary, St. John Fisher, uh, the St. Jerome Mission Chapel. Uh, S6, which is called the Crescent Family of Parishes, Nativity, Church of the Resurrection. Holy Trinity in Norwood and St. John Deer Park and St. Savior uh, includes S8, the Riverview Catholic family, which is Holy Cross Immaculata, our Lord Christ the King, St. Francis de Sales, St. Rose and St. Stephen. It's the S9 East Side family, St. Anthony, St. Cecilia, St. Margaret, St. John, St. Mary Hyde Park. It is the S11 family, which is all saints and St. Vincent Fair. And uh, finally, it includes the S13, which is St. Gertrude Parish in Madeira. So um, uh, Tony and Father Angie, who's the dean there, will be sending a joint letter to all the pastors in the deanery, inviting them to these sessions. And then if you're not in that deanery, please connect with us, connect with your uh, other parishes in your family, and start a conversation of how to bring this and schedule this for your deanery as well. Again, we want to do this 12 times. We want to do this for every one of our deaneries. And uh, now Andrew is going to uh, talk, give a little bit more detail about what is involved exactly at these three sessions. Thanks, Bob. Um, for those of you that don't know, I imagine a lot of you do know this, but for those of you that don't know, um, <clears throat> the uh, program we're going to be doing uh, that we're calling uh, a vision for love and action 
is built off of a program that the Social Action Office ran for several years called Salt and Light. And that program was a five session program. And a team of us took that program and kind of took it apart and then uh, rebuilt it, including information for the whole to cover the whole spectrum of love and action um, and also to make it a little bit more concise. Um, so that we're kind of covering the key parts, but not being too overwhelming because we know that families of parishes have a lot on their plates, a lot going on. Um, but so to make it a little more accessible, but also to cover the like that we've, the key key parts of what we think are important for a, a family of parishes as they vision for what love and action looks like. So these three sessions, uh, we kind of we imagine them being three successive uh, days, uh, three successive, excuse me, uh, like three Mondays, three Tuesdays, kind of uh, three weeks in a row. Uh, each session will be more or less an hour and a half. The first session might be a little bit longer. Second and third might be a little shorter, depending on the level of kind of brainstorming and discussion that come out of it. And the sessions kind of increase in interactivity as we move through uh, the session. So the first session really has a, a lot of kind of learning and listening. Uh, it looks at the roots and the structures of what love and action is. Um, you know, we look at how the church historically came to embrace the reality of mercy and compassion and how the church has really formed her positions and evolved over time to more fully honor the dignity of all people. You know, the church has been great at this for throughout history, but has always been learning and growing. And we look at that and how we've evolved and where we kind of sit now is how we understand love and action. Um, we look at you know, the different aspects, maybe the different spectrum of love and action from uh, charity work to encounter and presence uh, through justice and that whole spectrum with advocacy and other uh, things kind of touching in there. Um, we'll look a little bit at what Catholic social teaching is, uh, how and why did it start and how it's evolved over the centuries. Of course, we'll start with the biblical roots of that, how Jesus really calls us to live this out, as do the prophets, and how that's, again, grown over uh, through the church, through the popes and, and the um, bishops' conferences. And and that'll kind of bring us the, the, um, the fullness of what um, the session one is. In session two, we're going to look at a look at how love and action has really come to be institutionalized in the church and especially in the U.S. church, and 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 also kind of extrapolate how it might be institutionalized in every families of in every family of parishes. A part of doing that is looking at the tools. Tony mentioned this a little bit at the beginning: the tools that we've developed, the resources that are out there that can help parishes and families to achieve this goal. Um, look at the realities uh, that each family has that can uh, that we can build love and action and love and action can be a unifying force during beacons of light. Um, you know, one of the things that's really great about that inventory Tony mentioned is it allows every parish to look and see what all have we been doing as a parish that we may not connect as being love and action. We each do our own little piece and our own little great thing, but there's a through line of love and action that inventory allows you to look at all those great things, to celebrate those things, and then to combine those inventories as a, as a whole family and see what have we been doing so well and where might we kind of look on building this and how, again, beacons can be, uh, and love and action can be a unifying force within beacons of light for families of parishes. Now, in that session, we're also going to look at some of the great models of charity we have, like Catholic Charity, St. Vincent Paul, some others. And then we're also each um, each session, each uh, iteration of this, we're going to try to find some local organizations within those deaneries that are doing, that are living out faith, that are doing love and action, and have them talk a little bit about what they're doing, uh, how they're committed to love and action, uh, and how they might be opportunities for families of parishes to get involved. And of course, this is going to cover the spectrum, respect life, social action, charity focus, mission focus, all those kind of things. And then we'll close that session up by talking about a potential model for implementing love and action across your family of parishes. Uh, and I'll step back for a second and say, uh, everything that we're trying to create and offer to families of parishes are, are just suggestions, ideas, thoughts, supports, and tools. Nothing is 
prescriptive. Nothing is a mandate. There are lots of different models, lots of different ways that families of parishes can carry this out. We're just going to talk about one model, maybe a couple models that it might look like to give some ideas that families could think about drawing a piece of this, a piece of that, and how to kind of organize it again across the family of parishes and make sure that love and action is present in all aspects of the family from liturgy to formation, youth, adult ministry, all those different aspects. Then the third session is really all about the families of parishes brainstorming and visioning. And this is what our phase is, this vision phase, visioning for what love and action will look like across that family of parishes. Uh, we'll touch again a little bit on the resources and the recommendations that love and action has pulled together to support the families in their work. Uh, we'll look at some of the great models of justice. You know, we talk about the charity uh, models in session two, some of the justice models here in the local church in session three. Uh, and then and then really just empower every family of parish to take all they've learned and discern how to manifest love and action in their family of parishes. Um, it's going to look different in every family. Uh, it's going to look different maybe in each parish within the family, but we want it to be present in every family. And we want to make sure these resources are able to support you in whatever that might look like across your family. Um, and then the last piece will just to be to, to reemphasize, to re-encourage uh, an ongoing connection with the Love and Action team here from the Archdiocese. Uh, Tony, Bob, Marianne, and I serve as the core team. But there's a whole other dozen or so people that are part of our Love and Action team that stand ready to support, work with, um, offer guidance, ideas, brainstorm with you as, as families um, move forward and figure out what this looks like. So that's that's what that's what the vision for love and action uh, sessions are kind of the content's going to be over those over those three sessions. And so the last piece uh, to kind of our formal offering for today is to talk about what you can do next. And, and really, that is to encourage your family to participate and be a part of love and action. So uh, if you're not the love and action coordinator, but you do have a love and action coordinator in your parish, uh, your family of parishes, bring this to them. Uh, let them know about this. Uh, get them connected to us. Share some of this information. Um, we are recording these sessions, so um, we'll, after we're done with this, we'll send out a recording to everyone. They can share this with other folks who might be interested in learning about this. Uh, if you're not, again, if your excuse me, your family of parish doesn't have a love and action coordinator, consider volunteering for this role. You know, the whole ask the whole thrust of Beacons of Light, besides us being. Uh, church in our communities and being beacons of light is to support our pastors. They are overwhelmed with tasks and responsibilities and busyness, and we need to all step up to support our pastors uh, and make this a, a whole family, a whole community, a whole family, a parish effort. So consider stepping into that role or talking to someone who you think might be a good coordinator uh, and talking to the pastor about getting that person named, whether it's a paid position like Tony talked about or a volunteer-led position, whatever it might be. Um, again, if there's no coordinator, talk to your pastor about this. Uh, let your pastor know this is going on. Um, the deans are all aware of this. Uh, Tony has presented to the deaneries, uh, the deans a couple of different times. They're all on board with this. They've all signed off on it. It's just a matter of us getting these uh, scheduled and happening across um, from February the, through of 24 and beginning of 25. Uh, so talk with your pastor about this and, and encourage him to um, make sure when this is scheduled in your deanery to be present there. Um, some things, again, already mentioned, work on getting a love and action team formed in your family of parishes. Uh, consider, is your family of parishes a good site to host this session for your deanery? Might you all have the, a good space and be kind of centrally located uh, and you'd be willing to host this and have ask your pastor maybe if you'd be willing to step up and volunteer in that way. And then again, lastly, uh, stay connected with us. Um, Tony mentioned our Love and Action newsletter. If you're not receiving our Love and Action newsletter, just drop me a quick note in the chat and I'll make sure that we get your email address added to the newsletter. These come out on a monthly basis. They're short. Um, they're usually only one or two paragraphs, just some kind of key uh, points, some key things that are happening. So they're easy to digest, easy to share, um, and it won't take a lot of time to look at it and just kind of keep yourself up to speed with what's going on in Love and Action. Um, and then obviously you can share that with others as well when it comes to you. Um, and, and by the way, if you're if you're looking to share this with a Love and Action coordinator, a pastor, whatever it is, we're uh, working on creating a flyer that'll describe this, uh, this uh, session, these sessions, and we'll get that out to you as well. Uh, so you can uh, be able to more easily talk about this and share this with those around you. That's the kind of end of our formal presentation and what we kind of felt like was important to share with you all. 
just want to open this up now. Any questions, comments, uh, concerns, anything that you want to raise up with us from what you've heard in the last half an hour or what you've heard about Love and Action over the last year and a half that you want to get some clarity or discussion on, uh, we're here to um, support and talk about whatever it might be on your hearts and on your minds. I just have one quick thing. Oh, sorry. Sure, yeah, Kathleen and first. then Kathleen, go ahead. You, you said there will be a flyer. We should all get that, right? Because a couple of people underneath me don't have email or use email, so they weren't able to do these Zoom meetings. So I was hoping to be some sort of printout versus me just trying to relay all the info. So that would be great. That was my really only question. So that'd be great. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so I was wondering the the next, the training sound good. We have a good team. I'm blessed. I mean, our pastor really put together a good team for me to work with. So that's a blessing. Um, so I have expressed interest in hosting. I'm wondering if we could, if it's three sessions, would you guys be willing to move it? Love to have it at three different churches if it's well communicated. Absolutely. I, in fact, we, I don't think we thought about that, but that seems like kind of a cool idea to be able to have it at different places to get people familiar, seeing other parishes, other families. Um, you know, there's it's going to just need a room uh, for us to gather that's going to be able to hold, you know, essentially a table for each one of the families that are in that deanery. So um, if there's more than one space in the deanery and we can coordinate that, we'd be, I think, I shouldn't speak for the team, but I think we'd be more than happy to, to move and, and be wherever is um, best for the family, for the deanery. Okay, so I don't think my pastor is the dean of my area. So tell me the steps. If I take that description of the trainings you're going to create, and I take it to him, and he takes it to the dean, and we, my committee probably would prefer like Thursday nights because that's when we meet. So is that the steps I take to make the trainings happen in our area? Yeah, good question. So what I would just say is if anybody... Um, would like to pursue this, let's have a conversation offline and we'll just kind of talk through what makes sense. Um, so I think the the deeds will be supportive. We just want to be able to um, decide, does it make the most sense for, for you to approach it because you're ready to move on this? Um, and so that's going to make the, make the most sense. Or um, would it be better for us to kind of do it from a former archdiocese level so that it's, um, you know, sometimes that the dean is more comfortable that way. So whatever we think makes sense based on of, uh, of the deanery, we, we can talk okay, about. Great. So, so I'll email like Andrew to give me a little direction on that. Perfect. Okay. All right, and one last little quick thing. Mission is very much a part of Love in Action, obviously, right? Because we have a real strong mission group and I just want to make sure they're they're part of the vision. Okay. Thank you. Good question. I was going to say not to get ahead, but uh, I was actually just in a meeting yesterday and we're already talking about the next phase of culture. And we were talking about mission and how stewardship and evangelization and love and action all are part of what it is, the mission of our church and how we need to work together and make sure that being missionary disciples is really kind of a part of everything that we're doing and all these outward focused, um, uh, outward focused principles. And so it's, it's very much in the discussion and part of, I think, how we're seeing uh, our work. And, and to clarify, I think that the question was around like global solidarity mission, right? Oh, sorry, yeah. sorry, I misunderstood. So, but the answer is yes to both. <laughs> so. Yes, yes, that's very very true. Yeah, the mission office, Mike Gable, they are very much a part of this too. Sorry about that, yeah. Andrew, how many of the uh, coordinators the, uh, uh, for Love in Action are, are volunteers and how many are paid positions? Tony, do you have a better grasp of that, you think? Uh, it's a very small minority that are paid positions. I'll just say that at this point. I think we're, we're probably talking about three to four. Marriott. Well, um, and actually, let, let me clarify because I, I guess... We'll, in the sense that the person's entire role is just love and action. There's there's only probably a couple of those folks, but there are more paid staff where love and action is part of a broader plate of of staff responsibilities, and that's probably going to be the majority. Marian, do you want to? Yeah, I would say I don't think too many of them are volunteers. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. 
I don't want to be a paid staff people for Love and Action. My pastor identified with when we work it in the last several months. We don't have a team yet, but um, I might call you offline too. My, um, I guess I'm trying to determine since I'm a staff person working with volunteers, I'm trying to get to know the other volunteers in other parishes is trying to be diplomatic and not trying to seem like I'm coming down from the clouds and telling them what we're going to do, but trying to learn what they've already done, like you talked about, and try to incorporate that. So it's, I guess, more non-threatening. Maybe I'm reading too much or fearing too much about that, but I wanted to try to be in the role, the support of what they're already doing and not that they feel like I'm coming to tell them what to do, if that makes sense. And maybe it's unfounded fear, but I just don't want to come across too strong. So the phase one retreat might be a nice way to bring those people okay. together. Yeah, which we've not had yet that I'm aware of. So yeah. Yeah, I, I would I would just second that 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 um Mary and I have done a few of the retreats for some of the families. And I think in every one of them, it has been just like what you're talking about, you know, celebrating what people are already doing and talking about how to build on it, how to share it, how to spread it, how to grow it. Um, and there's, you know, nothing that we've talked about in Love and Action has been, again, prescriptive, do it this way, take these things wow. on, you must cover this. It's nobody can do everything. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's look at the great work that we've been doing so far and how can we expand on it and how can we do it better as a family? Okay, so I would contact or a password contact you if we wanted to have one of those retreats for our family. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I'll talk to our pastor and get back to you. And for those that don't know, the retreat is just a kind of two and a half, three hour uh, one time thing. We've usually done them on a Saturday morning, but they could be in an evening as well. Um, and it's like like Bob was talking about, making sure you have representatives from all of your parishes and just kind of coming together to share and, and start building that team together uh, in a very non-threatening, welcoming, encouraging way. Okay, thank you. So I wanna share on that note, what we've decided as a committee is to invite groups of people by topic to our monthly meetings. And it's been very beautiful. So we invited all the of the five churches, each of them has a form of St. Vincent de Paul. So we invited the head of each one to come and they got each got 15 minutes to share what they do. And there was a lot of, wow, you know, like we don't know what's going on. Right. But it was a beautiful way to say thank you to them also and to note what they do and ask, you know, where do you need help? What what kind of how could this committee be of service to your group? But we're kind of doing that. Like so we're going to do like all the people who do nursing home ministries. They're going to come to one meeting. And um, Mission will have one. And right now we're in the Christmas tree, giving tree people, you know. And so it's been a really interesting experience to let each tell their story, to note it, and to say thank you as well. So that's been working well for us. Thank you for that input. And I just have a clarifying question on what you just shared, because um, I think that's a great idea. Um, do you find, so is your intent, first of all, just to let them share and not to start bringing things together yeah our intent is to we don't really want to start anything new until we have a handle on what's already happening and and our sometimes we find ministries where there's one person that's doing a remarkable job but really could use some others so we're just trying to learn currently what's going on and how could we maybe help merge or publicize or whatever all right. Well, if there are no other questions, we can uh, close up shop here. Thank you all very much for uh, making the time to come and learn and talk with us. Um, we are, you know, again, want to be fully supportive of, of whatever's going on and however you're moving this forward. Anything at all that we can do to help out, any ways that we can be resources, that we can walk with you, um, bounce ideas off, whatever it is, please let us know. Uh, again, if you're not getting the Love and Action newsletter, uh, just drop me a note real quick and let me know, and I'll make sure that you do get the newsletter. Um, if you're getting it, probably, I'm guessing probably in our December letter, we'll have a link so that people can see the video for anyone who has who missed this that might want to watch it. Uh, so that'll come out, you know, the first of the month uh, after Thanksgiving. So thank you all uh, so much for your work, your passion, your time. Uh, wish you a wonderful Thanksgiving, and we will continue to see you on this path for love and action. Thank you.
Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, well, peace. Good job.